Today I'm gonna teach you three ways to mix like a DJ instantly. So this whole video will be based on the DJ technique of drop mixing and drop mixing is done in what stops the previous song and simply plays the next song in. The key though to drop mixing is timing and knowing where to stop your previous song and where to start your next song. And it can be done by either pressing the play slash pause buttons or using your volume faders or cross fader. So for this video, we'll be using our play slash pause buttons and volume faders. Anyway, with that said, let's start with the first lesson, which is chorus drop mixing. So this is a technique commonly done by EDM superstars to keep the energy of the mix going. And this technique works best for EDM, house, trap, dubstep, and the like. Anyway, it works by shifting songs 4 beats before the drop section and this section in particular is usually the part where they do a 4 beat countdown before the drop. So the first thing you want to do is cue point your songs. So we'll cue point both songs 4 beats before the drop section. Now the cue point A on the first song will just be your visual cue point to shift songs and the cue point A on the second song will be the section where we'll trigger and play it. So here's how we do it. With both volume faders all the way up, we'll play the first song, then wait till it reaches its cue point A section. Then once you reach it, at the same time, we'll lower its volume, then trigger and play the next song via its cue point A section. The next technique is pretty similar to the first one, but this time we'll be mixing at the breakdown sections of songs to help smoothen out our transitions. With those positions Q pointed as Q point A, all we have to do now is play the first song. Then once you reach its Q point A breakdown section, we'll trigger and play the next song via its Q point A breakdown section. Now if you guys want enhance and smoothen out your drop mixing, a useful effect that I use is Echo. So I'll activate Echo on the song I want the drop mix from right before it reaches its drop mix section. Now before we move on to technique number 3 which is my favorite way to drop mix, if you guys want to know how I made these edited tracks and remixes, it's through learning music production through Skillshare. I took King Arthur DJ Slats and remixing that's music, digital production basics. There it teaches you how to remix songs and make them sound like your own, and those lessons are perfect for DJs who not only want up their production game, but their DJ performance game as well. 
So if you want to check out that music production masterclass and a whole lot more, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down below will get two free months of free membership on Skillshare so you can explore your creativity. And Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With over 20,000 classes in graphic design, music production, songwriting, and more, which are all fueled by passion creatives like myself, you're pretty much set for life if you want to learn anything new, efficiently, effectively, and economically. Because an annual subscription on Skillshare just costs us $10 a month. So make 2020 a year where you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes. Anyway, let's now move on to technique number three. Now the third way involves drop mixing and using the echo, echo effect. effect. And this technique is a great way to transition huge BPM differences, genres, and vibes. And a lot of hip-hop DJs like Jazzy Jeff use this trick all the time. So in this method, we don't need to cue point our current song. All we have to do is cue point our next song at the section we want it to begin. So the key to doing this transition is finding a good song with a good intro. So this technique works by letting the current song play and echoing it out at the end of a phrase of your choice, followed by playing the next song via its cue point intro section. So the first step is to cue point our next song at an ideal intro section. So for song B, I'll cue point its beginning. Once that is done, the next step is to simply play the next song, activate an echo effect on it, and either stop or bring down its volume. Then as echo tail lingers, play the next song by either drumming it, scratching it, or just triggering it. And that's it. Let me know which technique was your favorite in the comment section down below. And with that said, I will see you all in the next one.